In the last few releases of Alter Sim Solid, the composite material capabilities have come a long way. So in this video, I wanted to show a few examples of those tools through a few models, one on flat components and one on curved components. For this first example, I want to look at the rib structures on this wing panel. So if I come up here on the left in my quad routine, I right click in the assembly, I can see that in my assembly, I have 23 parts and 17 skins that are included. So to get a quick look at the skins, I can right click on the assembly again and choose show and then select skins. Okay, so these are the parts I want to apply my laminates to. Now I've already created a composite material and you can see that in my material database. Then if you wanted to add a new material, you just right click on generic materials and hit add new material. Now that I have my material, I want to add a laminate. So if I come to my assembly bar here, I'll find this symbol and then hit create laminate. And now I can select the parts I want to apply this to. So I click on the rib. Now I can add all of those manually, or I can just click this little box here and it will choose all the different rib designs that are similar in my model. So now I'm going to create the ply stack. And this lets me go through the process of adding different layers, which includes thicknesses and orientations based on how I've set up my design. And you can see it's a really simple form entry, makes it really easy to set up. If I want to repeat the layers, I can highlight those plies I've already created and hit this copy icon and it will paste those plies in for me again. And then I can even change the order of these layers pretty easily just by finding these arrows at the bottom of the menu and moving them up and down. And then if you want to see if your layers are set up correctly, this little checkbox here allows you to visualize the ply orientation. So now I'm going to repeat this process for these smaller ribs because they're going to have a different ply stack and orientation. Now you can see when I'm done on the left here in my project tree, it does show all the laminates that are included in my assembly now. Okay, so now that my composite material is applied, I can have it show any parts where no material is applied yet. So I can do that by right clicking assembly and then going to show and then parts without material. And in here, it's really easy to apply the material. I'm just gonna highlight the parts and then I'm gonna make these aluminums. Okay, so last thing before I set up my study is I just wanna quickly change the gap and penetration tolerances. I just wanna put them both at about one millimeter. So I come to my connections in the project tree. Then I find the automatic connections icon here at the top of my assembly bar. And then I can just input those numbers. So now I can set up my study. If I come up here to the analysis button and choose structural and I'll do a linear statics test. And then I would go through the process of adding my constraints. I'll do that at the end of these brackets as well. And then for the load, I'm just going to apply gravity here on this one. So the last thing before I actually run my study is I want to come over here to the project tree and I want to double click the solution settings. I'm going to change my solver to be global plus local. And now as my study is running, I want to quickly just talk about the difference between global and local. Global will apply refinement to the entire model and then every pass it will increase accuracy everywhere, not just those areas of high stress. Whereas the local part really narrows down on those critical areas. So by choosing global plus local, I get the most accurate results, but it might take a little bit longer to solve. Now I have sped this up, but even with the extra passes, it took just over a minute to solve completely. Okay, so now let's look at some curvature. My model here is a section of a fuselage from an airplane. And again, I've already created a new composite material, and for this one I called it the curve material. So my next step is really just to step into creating the laminate. So I'm going to go through the exact same steps as before. I'll select the stringers as the part and create that ply stack. And then I'll choose all instances so I make sure I get all those covered. 
Okay, so jumping ahead a little bit, I'm going to apply a second stack here to the skin, which is the outside of the fuselage as well. Okay, and just as before, I'm going to isolate those parts that don't have a material yet. I'm going to make those aluminum too. Now with this one, I have a list of rivets that I want to add, and I want to include that in the static. So I'll come here to my virtual connectors icon here on the assembly bar. I'm going to import the list. Then once I hit apply, you can see all the rivets show up now in my project tree. So now I can go into setting up my study as I did in the first one. So I'll add my constraints and then I'm going to apply a uniform pressure on the outer skin. And then again, I'm going to change my solver settings to go global plus local. Now this study is a little bit more complicated than the first one we looked at. So it's going to take a little bit longer to solve, but even from start to finish, it only takes a couple minutes to get everything completed. So I hope this has helped kind of understand the workflows for composites inside of some solid. If you have any other questions or if you want to reach out to us, go to www.trueinsight.io. Thank you.